and hello, the internet. Kobe Proctor here to talk about intention. How many times a day do you do things with specific intention? Like the intention to, um, to get a new haircut, uh, to physically do something with all of your will and commit to it 100%. You know, decide to change the litter box just because, you know, you looked at it or because it was a planned part of your day. How many of you have planned parts of your day based on intention? I struggle with being very wishy-washy about some things. Even basic things like grinding cannabis, you know, about the intention of doing it. It's very interesting because I feel like um, there's a lot of things in my life that I don't do 100% with intention. And if I just changed the way I approach things, I would decrease the amount of time, increase the amount of efficiency, and uh, eliminate a lot of waste in my life. Um, but because I know I'm, what I'm going to do at the end of it, you know, so every day we struggle with things that I think we know at the end of the day where we're going to be you know, mentally um, just preparing yourself for the fact that you need to do some basic things daily and just getting them done out of the way right out of the way because if you struggle with procrastination it's going to be a real problem I do big time um, and I have for a long time so lists are a necessary part of my life ADHD is a, is a real haunting <laughs> reality for me that um, it is almost debilitating in some aspects, you know. I, uh, I can't, can't, can't seem to get things done in an orderly fashion and, and mainly because I'm so disorganized as it is. If I was more organized, it would make things significantly easier. Uh, than they are now. Um, but I think as time goes on, what I'm finding is that um, there are different alternatives, you know? Uh, there's, uh, well, alternatives to, you know, Ritalin, for example, Adderall. Those are uh, very effective at keeping me on task, but um, they also huh, turn me into a freaking zombie and you know, uh, I struggle with impulsivity and some issues that I just am not happy about and I don't like, I don't want to take the medication. Um, it's like a boost in uh, epinephrine and, or norepinephrine or whatever it is and dopamine. I just, I don't get satisfaction out of that. The same way I don't get satisfaction out of pain medication. I just never have, it's not a, it's not a plus for me. I don't know, maybe it's just my brain and how it works. I just. No, cannabis on the other hand is fantastic. I think in a lot of ways it uh, solves a lot of issues. So um, here's to cannabis. But mainly because cannabis just gets such a bad name nowadays, you know? Dispelling myths. Kind of important. And I think as time goes on, people are going to understand that it's really, it's not as bad as people have made it out to be. For people who are old enough, uh, develop brains, and the ability to rationalize what they're doing is um, an impact to their body. Because it is. Anytime you put something into your body, you're impacting your body in some way, shape, or form. Cannabis, um, I know for me personally, um, impacts my motivation, um, it, depending on if I eat and certain things. There's a lot of variables that impact uh, metabolism. So if I decide to, you know, fast during the day, but I smoke cannabis and consume coffee, um, I really don't struggle with that need to feel like I'm going to eat a bunch of stuff. Um, whereas I do feel a bit hungrier later on. I feel like it controls my hunger better. I was, I was younger, I used to struggle with that a lot um, from cannabis, and I just don't now. Um, but I also used to, it would impact um, motivation. Um, 
when I'd eat food or a certain, you know, caloric intake, it would just, like, make me crash. And, and as long as I just don't eat those foods, I really don't struggle with that. Food cannabis actually helps me be more creative and, and more focused on, um, and more attentive on what I'm doing and more committed, um, to what I'm doing, you know, versus like, oh, I'll do a little bit of this. I'll do, focus on, you know, cleaning the dishes and then I'll, you know, get halfway done and go to something else because I get distracted too easy. And I guess that's where I'm getting at is intention. People struggle with that big time. And I'm one of those people um, struggling with the intention to do something um, and being wishy washy about it is, is a problem. You spend a lot of your day just you know, beating yourself up about not finishing a task or not approaching a task because you're so worried about the variable variability and the outcome. And, um, I think that in a lot of ways, uh, you know, cannabis actually helps me with motivation as long as I approach it the right way. Um, and I think that that's the way most people are not approaching it. I think, uh, recreational um, substances have become an all-time high because people just need to escape. Things in reality are not fun right now, and I think a lot of people are just trying to pretend like it's not real. And I don't think that helps, really. I think that you know, keeping a focus, meditating, being centered, uh, really is the better, the better, the better, the better, you know, focus, um, uh, the awareness, you know, mental awareness, um, cash grab, so to speak. I don't know what to call it. What's it called? Just like the, the low hanging fruit, the easy, you know, you can do meditations and affirmations and say, Hey, you're really awesome in the mirror, even though you don't feel that way. It's good for you. It's good for your body. It's good for your mind to remind yourself that, you know, you're here, you're going through, and life's hard, and you're doing the best you can, and as long as you can be straightforward with yourself and look yourself in the eye. Um, and it takes time for some people. I mean, I, I can definitely attest to being one of those people that couldn't exactly do that for a long time. I still struggle with some of my own personal stuff, but we're all here on this mental roller coaster of fucking existence together. And, uh, creating together so here's to you know us being uh, one with the uh, the community um, I've noticed some things that have really um, piqued my attention uh, recently um, in the event uh, in, in the, the you know I guess this reality that of the pandemic is that we've uh, come together more and created more and had more intention, you know, more focus on things that really, really mattered for some of us. Some of us, I think, are still struggling with some harsh realities of this new pandemic and this new world we live in um, post uh, COVID. But, um, you know, I think something that's really amazing is our ability to come together and create um, regardless of time and space and restrictions. And, and so people like uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt there um, in the hit record uh, kind of movement, I think, in a way. I mean, it's a movement of people. I, I think it's really amazing um, what these people are doing. Uh, inspires me. So I'm, uh, I'm going to take a look into stuff like that. And I think more people should be trying to create things together. Um, during this time, I think we need more of what makes us relatable, makes each other relatable, less of what makes it each other not. Because I think if anything, we've really become divided and it hurts to see the world so divided. I haven't made a video in a long time because I just, I, uh, I've been focused on some personal stuff and personal health stuff, but aside from that, like, it just it hurts to watch everybody so just decimated by, um, by this thing with George Floyd. I, I just, 
So if it's a hard time for us, but what we're doing is um, we're, we're, we're working through it as people. And I think that as time goes on, you know, more and more people are going to recognize the realities of police brutality and the realities of, you know, because police brutality is real for white people too, but it's not like it is at all. Like I can attest to dealing with kind of a little bit of a, <clears throat> a little bit of a bias because I, you know, go around with like blue hair and like, you know, I was literally spray painting anarchy signs though. Like, so I was up to no good, you know? Um, and, uh, I mean, I had a bias because I was an actual somebody who wasn't doing something wrong, you know? Um, because I had a disdain for authority and judgment because of all these different inequalities and, and, you know, issues of the system that I didn't even really understand because I was 16. Um, but now I, I, I guess I do really understand where that anger part, angry part of myself was, but... The weird thing is, is I had no idea then, no fucking clue what it, what it was to really be impacted by this stuff. And I see this now and I'm like, fucking, I genuinely think that the, the police have gone way, way beyond what's acceptable um, when it comes to force um i mean aside from george floyd I, that's that's just without a doubt straight up murder i mean it's just horrible um but that happens all the time and i think that this this carelessness this just disdain for fucking human life this disconnect from reality the empathy I think it's happening in a mass scale because of our um, our, uh, our disconnection because of our phones and and uh, social media and, and video games and the list goes on. I think we're more and more disconnected, but then more and more connected in other ways. So I think there's a lot of opportunities here to change the the. Uh, the narrative on, on the top, right? There's a lot of things that I think are shifting that can be continued in a momentous direction, if that makes sense. Like, uh, 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 you know, you see these movements and you move them in the right direction, but you have assholes coming in and trying to fuck things up and make things worse for everybody else. Like the, uh, you know, and they're not Antifa. I, I, they're not Antifa. These guys are coming in more than likely from these, you know, different hate groups or whatever troll, uh, you know, they're trolls. They're going out and they're fucking shit up and trying to make it look like, um, you know, these people of the community and they're not. And it's a shame because I mean, they're not even assholes like I was that just wanted to get their fucking rocks off on smashing a brick window or fucking throwing a Molotov. You know, I, I at least could, could claim that I just wanted to watch things burn and light things on fire because I was an angry kid. But, um, but there's these guys out there that are doing things maliciously to fucking cause people harm and problems uh, in, their, in their lives, but also to paint a picture that's not accurate. Um, and I think we're going to really find out a lot about who we are as a society in these next couple of months. Um, between the, the, the COVID-19, um, the COVID shuffle, as I've been calling it, um, and uh, these really harsh realities between real human beings in, in real lives and, um, and the police who are being basically commissioned to create these lines of violence that, you know, once they don't like where you are and they want to move things back and they want to change perimeter, you're fucking moving and if you're not, you're getting hurt. And it don't matter. There's no fucking statute there. This is, this is unprecedented times because the president himself does not 
give a shit what happens to you, whether you're white or black. He, he doesn't fucking care. I mean, he cares less, I think, if you're marginalized um, because he is fucking just disconnected and partially racist, but I think classist more than anything. I think he is just really fucking disconnected. Uh, he's never had to fucking live life like an American. He's never made mac and cheese in his fucking life. Ever. Ever. And I don't, like, that's not, like, like, look, if you never made mac and cheese, no big deal. Like, I'm not, but fucking, this guy would be, never. Like, he'd fucking never do that. It would, it would never happen. He'd fucking die before he had to make fucking hamburger help or some crazy shit. And that's just, I think that's where we are. And that's, that's, thing I'm having a hard time with right now is that, um, we've, we've really, 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 really gone back to the stone age when it comes to social, uh, the social reality in this country. I, I, I mean, I, I have no disconnection from the fact that it was already there. It was already rooted. It was already a class system that, that, that was, uh, never really went away. Um, but it's hard because it's like I grew up in New Hampshire and in New Hampshire, like, uh, I, I had a hard time realizing this when I went to Florida. You know, I, I met some really racist people. Uh, like I held the door open for a woman of color and and this guy was just disgusted with me. It's like he looked at me and he said something. I don't even remember what it was exactly, but it was just, it was, it was really rotten. And, and I was angry about it because I was a rebel rebellious 18 year old I think at the time 19 year old at the time my dad's like my dad's like don't don't fuck with him he's the guy with the fucking giant pickup truck and the gun <laughs> the gun rack in the back and and then you know, Titusville Florida you know like conservative redneck Ku Klux Klan dude like for real the real deal you know like big old you know, fucking rebel flag in the back, and it was just, it was really bananas, this guy, um, and I, I just remember feeling like this is nothing like where I'm from, so I mean, I ended up coming, it was like four months I was down there, I came back to New Hampshire, um, I just wasn't Kyle for Florida, it's not me, and, and then when I came back to, to New Hampshire, I was just, I guess I didn't realize. I guess I didn't know uh, how bad it was. And I still feel like I'm sheltered from that reality because I think a lot, there's a lot in New Hampshire that sure there's some racism, but most of the time, I mean, you meet anybody around here, regardless of color or I just, I don't, I don't know. I have always been friends with everybody and just really liked everybody. And I feel like there's a lot of people in the area like that. There's also a lot of people that voted for Trump, which is just this whole thing, you know? And I, I was, I, mean, I am friends with people, um, close friends that are Trump supporters, but I feel like in the last month or so, they really just like hushed it a lot. They've really become less vocal because I mean, mm. A hot moments for him lately on the mic. Like he is not coming up roses for re-election. And I don't think Biden is either. They're making a strong case for the third party for sure. Libertarians uh United uh go for it. I mean I um after Yang, I mean I just haven't been super driven politically right now, you know. I think a lot of people feel the same. They feel dis, you know, disenfranchised. Um, and as time goes on, it doesn't make us feel better, right? Yang is right. I mean, we gotta move together, but like, what's the realistic possibility that Trump's gonna lose this next election? Well, maybe you're pretty high, but look who he's losing it to. Fucking Joe Biden. And I don't feel great about that guy either, man. Like. He's not great, like, and it's not, like, better that he's, you know, a predator, like, but not Trump. Like, it's not better. It's not fucking okay.
None of it is okay. Absolutely none of it. The whole system is fucking flip flop. Everything is just a bunch of people with disorganized desks shuffling paper around. Here I am 20 minutes talking about organization. So, here we are in the middle of a pandemic chatting about shit that does not necessarily matter a whole lot. But organization is pretty important. I'm just trying to stay mentally sane and, you know, I'm falling off the rocker. I'm getting a kid, you know, take care of. Fucking late at night right now. I'm up trying to stand and fucking do my little bits of uh, PT therapy and for my ankles. And yep, that's. Uh, Pretty, uh, pretty fun. Um, so I think all of us are really on the right path of no, the two party system does not work anymore. No, we're not happy with Joe Biden. No, we're not happy in this current situation. Um, we need to make it vi vocal. I think no, but no, not enough people voted in the primaries for him to become president. Um, we didn't get to any of the other president, uh, the, any of the other states like, I just, I don't know, man. I think that there's a, there's a big, there's a big thing happening right now. We, we've got to be real careful where we stand as a society because we can misstep real fucking easy. So on that note, Love your family. Stay focused on local politics. I can't send this enough. I haven't been focusing lately as much, but I have been focusing on my local politics and trying to get local paper and all that stuff. Try to get a local paper. Local politics, local politics, local politics. Save your local paper. I can't say this enough. I'm going on 23 minutes. I hope everybody's all well, and I'll talk to you all soon. Uh, if you get a chance, as always, subscribe, like, and all that jazz. Um, but for real, your thoughts, super important to this one. Um, I know was, I did a lot of ranting on my part, but uh, that's what this is all about. And uh, I want to hear your rant back. You guys are awesome. Take care.